Hello friends. So today's topic laboratory diagnosis of fungus infection. This is a very important topic because we will apply all of these methods for diagnosis of any kind of particular fungus. So today we are going to discuss it in general and then uh, whenever individual fungus we will discuss uh, we are going to apply all the same methods in this protocol. So let us see the first approach of laboratory diagnosis. So obviously it will start with specimen collection then we will do the direct microscopy of whatever specimen we have collected in form of wet mount examination, smear preparation and examination and histopathological examination or biopsy examination. Then we will do the culture of the sample on fungal culture medium that is usually SDA that is Sabrot dextrose agar at 25 degree centigrade and 37 degree centigrade. Why? Uh, we will discuss it when it will come to the culture medium section uh, soon in this session. Then we will do serological detection. Either we detect antigen or we will detect antibody. Molecular methods like PCR or sequencing methods can also be used. And then additional methods like skin test and gas liquid chromatography are also used for uh, diagnosis of fungal infection. So let us jump start with specimen collection. So specimen collection usually uh, it depends on site of lesion. So skin, scrapings, hair, nails, tissues, if it is causing meningitis and CSF, body fluids, urine, pus. So whatever the pathogenic lesion is there, based on that, we will collect this specimen. Then come the direct microscopy. So in direct microscopy, we have three kinds of examination, wet preparations, smear examinations, and histopathological examination. So in wet preparation, the most commonly used method is KOH wet mount microscopy. Now keratinized tissue specimens, usually nail, hair and skin, they're usually treated with 10% KOH. Uh, for nail and hair, because it has too much amount of keratin, we can also increase the concentration up to 20 to 40%. Why we are using KOH? Because fungus as well as human cells, they are basically uh, eukaryotic cells. So alkali will digest the human cells, keratin and other tissue materials, uh, enabling fungal element to be seen clearly. But uh, make sure that you examine it within 30 to 40 minutes because after that, uh, even fungal cell cannot resist uh, KOH uh, too much and sometimes it will also dissolve. Glycerol is added 10% to prevent the drying of slide. DMSO that is dimethyl sulfoxide help in tissue digestion. The second method in wet preparation is LPCB mount also known as lactophenol cotton blue wet mount microscopy. Here we are using a lactophenol cotton blue. Phenol will act as a disinfectant. Lactic acid preserves the morphology of fungi and glycerol prevents the drying and cotton blue stains the fungal elements very clearly. The third method is India ink or negrosin. Uh, we earlier also have uh, seen that method for capsule detection in uh, bacteria. The same thing goes here for detection of capsulated yeast that is Cryptococcus neoformans. We can see the capsule of Cryptococcus neoformans with these negative staining methods. Then uh, in wet preparation, we have finished three methods that is KOH wet preparation, LPCB mount and India ink. Now coming to the second uh, type of direct microscopy that is smear examination in which we make a smear, we heat fix it and then we do some kind of staining to see the fungus. Obviously the most common uh, stain that we know in microbiology is gram staining and gram positive uh, budding yeast like cells are easily seen if uh, yeast is present. The second stain that we can use in smear preparation is uh, calcofluor white stain. Uh, it is more sensitive, it binds to cellulose and chitin of fungal cell wall and uh, it fluoresces under UV light. So fluorescent microscope uh, it is needed to see this light. The third type of direct microscopy is histopathological examination or biopsy examination. Here we are using uh, special stains uh, for fungus for this histopathological examination. The most commonly used one is hematoxylene and eosine. 
The second one, which is very specific for fungus, especially live fungus, that is uh, pastein, that is periodic acid quip, skiff. Now, past positive fungi, they appear magenta color or deep pink in color, while their nuclei stain blue. The third fungal stain in histopathological examination is GMS, Gombri Methanamine Silver. It is an alternative to pass. It can stain both live as well as a dead fungi, and it stains the polysaccharide component of the cell wall. The fungi appear black in color against a pale green color background. The third histopathological stain is Musi Carmine stain. It is specially used for Cryptococcus and Rhinosporidium uh, carminophilic cell wall. It stains the cell wall dark pink in color. The next stain is Mason Fontana stain. It is mainly used for pigmented fungi or colored fungi which will appear brown or black in color with help of the stain. So after microscopy is over, uh, we can move forward to the next uh, diagnostic method that is culture. So fungal culture medium, the most commonly used fungal culture medium is Sabrot's dextrose agar. It is most commonly used medium for fungal culture. Uh, its pH is very acidic, 5.6, uh, because most of the bacteria which are usually contaminant for fungal culture, they do not grow at this acidic pH. But we also add antibiotic like cyclohexamide, chloramphalicol and uh, gentamicin to inhibit bacterial growth. It also contains 1% paptone and 4% dextrose. Uh, sometimes the cyclohexamide which is added may uh, inhibit many contaminant fungus also. Uh, but when we want to grow those fungus, we usually avoid cyclohexamide. Then there are special fungal culture medium. For example, uh, for candida uh, detection we use cornmeal agar and rice starch agar these are nutritionally deficient media and it stimulates the chlamydospore formation uh, in the fungus and that helps in identification of uh, species of candida then there are chrome agar media which will give you different color colonies based on which fungus is growing especially it is used for speciation of uh, candida then BHI agar and blood agar, that is brain heart infusion agar. Uh, it is an enriched media because it is enriched with uh, uh, brain heart infusion growth as well as blood. Uh, it is used for growing fastidious fungi like cryptococcus and histoplasma. Niger seed agar and bird seed agar, they are usually selective culture medium for cryptococcus. Now once we know the culture medium and routinely SDA is used most of the fungus they grow well at 25 to 30 degrees celsius so you can grow them at room temperature but we know that some of the fungus they are diamorphic and most of the systemic fungi which affects humans are diamorphic uh, that's why uh, we also want to grow the fungus at 37 degrees celsius also that's why always two slants uh, of culture medium is used one will be kept at 25 and another will be kept at 37 we usually use bod incubators capable of maintaining low temperatures for this incubation time fungus is a slow growing organism uh, compared to bacteria so usually fungus minimum it will take two to three weeks to grow properly once uh, we have a growth uh, in culture medium then the main thing is to identify the fungus and we have two things microscopic as well as macroscopic colony appearance for culture identification. Uh, macroscopic appearance, that is the gross appearance of colony. So first of all, we will see the rate of growth, whether it is a rapidly growing fungus or slow growing fungus. Most of the fungus, as I already told you, will take usually two to three weeks to grow. That means if it grows less than five days or within one week, it is a rapid grow rapidly growing fungus. And most of the yeast, saprophytes and other opportunity fungi, they usually uh, are rapid growers while dermatophytes, subcutaneous and systemic fungus, they are usually slow growing. They take usually more than one week, sometimes more than four weeks also. Then we will look for any kind of pigmentation. Now, when we see for fungus, we usually use slants, whether in taste tubes or in uh, screw cap bottles. Now here we have to see front as well as back side of the medium because both may sometimes show different kind of uh, uh pigmentation so front pigmentation is known as obverse pigmentation and back side pigmentation that is known as reverse side or of the 
culture medium so obverse as well as reverse pigmentation has to be used texture refers to how the colony would have felt if it is allowed to touch um, for example yeast like colonies uh, it resembles uh, colonies of staphylococci but much drier and dull there is no aerial mycelium some yeast develop a delicate fringe around the colony after 24 hours or longer then we have glabrous colony they appear leathery or waxy they have little if any aerial mycelium and the colony almost seems to merge with the agar the next is velvety colony which resembles a plush velvet fabric or suet and fungi have short aerial hyphae of approximately equal length and few conidia or spores are visible to naked eye then we have cottony woolly flocos colonies develop when fungus produce large quantities of a long aerial hyphae the hyphae usually become tangled and few of these colonies may totally feel the petri dish and they lead the lift of petri dish so they are also known as lid lifters then granular or powdery colonies are formed when uh, fungi conidate or they form spores and they have abundant hyphae as well as uh, conidia so that was about texture now coming to topography topography means view from top so the way the colony surface is arranged uh, its peaks and valley like a topographic map uh, so flat colonies they predominate in mycology the form is efficient and require no extra effort uh, or enzyme from the fungus second topography is rugose colonies where radial grooves that radiate from the center of the culture towards a rim like spokes in a bicycle wheel folded colonies have random folds rather than grooves the folds may be long or short parallel at right angles and in some combination of this patterns crateri form colonies it looks like a volcano there is a central depression which is surrounded by a raised edge and it is less common verrucous colonies like warts or knobs on the surface like cauliflower cauliflower growth cerebri form colonies it looks like a brain has emerged out of a uh, culture medium uh so exponential growth is limited to peripheral growth zone which is width of the colony margin that contributes to the growth uh the fruiting region productive zone and aging zone are shown as in the diagram so that is about gross appearance or macroscopic appearance now look at the microscopic appearance and for that we use lpcb lactophenol cotton uh blue teased mount here uh, we take a small piece of culture medium and very uh gently we try to tease it on a slide and we can look for nature of hyphae whether it is a septate hyphae or aseptate hyphae whether it is colorless or hyaline or whether it is a colored or fluid fungi whether it is narrow or wide which type of uh, spores we are seeing so lpcb mount uh, can also be done by tape mount it is very easy uh, we take a cello tape and we just touch it on the growth uh, of the slant or petri dish whatever you have and then uh, impressions taken by this cellophane tape on the colonies uh, we put it on the slide by stretching it on which we have already put the lpcb drop the second way is slide culture it is basically in situ microscopic appearance of fungal colony um, now how to do this we uh, cut a small portion uh, of the culture medium in which fungus has uh, we want to grow the fungus that is usually sabodextrose agar or pitotodextrose agar we put it on a slide uh, i think this diagram is better explain it so what we have done we have taken the slide we have cut uh, uh with help of test tube a small circular portion of medium then we have inoculated that medium with our fungus we put a cover slip on it uh we have also put it on a glass rods with a towel below it uh, which is moistened with water we close it and grow it so gradually the fungus will grow in that culture medium piece and because it is on slide you can microscopically examine it 
the other methods of identifications uh, vary from uh, what you are seeing in this LPCB mount or in slide culture. For example, if you are seeing yeast-like colonies, then uh, for example, if you want to detect candida, then various tastes will come like jump tube taste, dalmo plate culture, carbohydrate fermentation and assimilation taste. We will discuss this taste when we will discuss each individual fungus in upcoming sessions. Then for cryptococcus urease taste because it is urease positive fungi. The dermatophytes uh, hair perforation taste, dermatophyte taste medium and identification mediums are available with change color depending on which dermatophyte is going growing. Serological methods either we want to detect antibody or we want to detect antigen. So antibody detection methods usually ELISA, uh, agglutination taste, complement fixation taste or immunodiffusion taste they are usually employed. For antigen we are using latex for CSF. We can also use immunohistochemistry if you want to detect antigen on cells of tissue sections. PCR and its modification and sequencing methods can be used but they are very expensive. Skin taste, taste to demonstrate delayed type hypersensitivity. These tastes are usually non-specific. They just tell you that delayed hypersensitivity is there against fungal antigen. And it is usually done for systemic fungi like histoplasma, blastomyces, coccidioides, paracoccidioides, dermatophytes, sporothrix, and candida. Lastly, we have gas liquid chromatography which detect fungal metabolites in body fluid. So that sums up uh, the laboratory diagnostic methods for fungal infections. So this is the usual approach uh, for detecting any kind of fungus. So if you like our videos, uh, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, press the bell icon button and share it with your friends and colleagues. Thank you.